wants to stay, but <laughs> woo! Get your Grammy nominations in early, boys. Dunson, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Battle Arena. I'd say we'd cut it there, but we got some games to play today. And we're going to be jumping into game one in just a few minutes. We have Optic going against Golden Guardians. And I know we have to come down a little bit from that, but we will go back up in the game with intensity. And this one is, you know, they said Optic could really be taking this matchup. They've been feeling good in the mid lane with Crown. Froggen as well has been having a few games for himself. Kobe's wondering why he's getting the picks that he can do so well on. I think we're going to get a good matchup here at, a, at a game one of the day. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, this is this is a huge matchup with playoff implications. Absolutely. These guys are fighting for the final spots. FlyQuest, TSM, Cloud9, Liquid all lost. All of the remaining teams are fighting for these final two spots. Golden Guardian sitting in fifth currently, seven and nine. And Optic is in that three-way tie for sixth at six and ten. So they need to get these wins to make ground on CLG and Echo Fox. And it's all down to the wire here, Riv. It's very possible that it is a 2-0 week for them and feels good to sit at eight and ten here to end out the split. Week nine, we are already there. It's like yesterday was week one. I could not believe it, but. 9.5 on the patch, and we're about to be in the game as bands are finished with Optic on their final third. Seeing that Silas and Karthus being locked away from Froggen, and Jace is going to be taken away from Hanser in the top lane as he's been putting down some good plays. See what they want. Lissandra is left open to start things off, and control made for the mid lane. Yeah, well, Lissandra has just been almost 100% presence across the top five regions. It's been so ridiculously popular on this patch. Can be flexed top and mid, certainly. Um, with Aftershock does allow it to play that pseudo frontline very, very well. We have seen some players stepping away from that, going even Klepto or Comet or trying to play more for that lane. But in general, you are expecting this mm -hmm. to be the Aftershock frontline style for Lissandra. And we do see that Meteos is in for Optic Gaming today. I believe he played last week as well for both week eight games. So he will be feeling good to be with the team. They got a little bit of a role going there with this lineup. Jarvan will be in the jungle for them with Tom Kench and another lock in here for their first phase of picks. Varys and Braum in the bot side we see coming in here for Deathly. I really do like the Tom Kench pick in particular for Big. It's the most played for both of these supports. And so not only are you grabbing a lot of comfort for Big, you're actually taking away comfort from Olay. Mm -hmm. I would say it's been the champion most people are pointing to as Olay's best performances have come from. So. I think not only is it just really, really comfort, it's super strong against Lissandra, being able to deny a lot of those picks. Yep. Also from the Varus ultimate. And Zillion coming in. Direct ban for that Silas. Now you yeah. see why. <laughs> Zillion going to be coming in mid lane here for Crown. Will be, I believe. I'm going to check on that. But it is, it's his third play yep. for the for the pick. and One and one so far. I think this is this is really leading me to believe that we are going to get some sort of a hyper carry here for Arrow. You do need some good target to actually be speeding up. Uh, that is worth using your revive on so far. Mm -hmm. We don't have that coming through. I like the Jinx ban as a response to GGS because that was really something that I was thinking of that makes a lot of kind of sense in that regard. We've seen Draven banned at them quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You can do a quick carry game if you can be aggressive with the entirety of the team. It looks like you get that in, get in with Jarvan, get in with that Zillion, you're not afraid to fight against this Golden Guardian squad. Yeah, we also have seen Kaisa from Arrow. I think that's mm -hmm. another pick that could work very well. Uh, he has had one Tristana game. I think you are really looking for those scaling hyper carries unless they're going to try to focus the game yeah. plan around Dokla. And that's not really been optic style. They're very often Why just... not Vayne? Everyone is doing it. Yeah, Vayne can work <laughs> certainly as well. Uh, Sivir and other kind of hyper scaling marksmen there that would make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. You can obviously speed up and, and kind of send in your Jarvan, but it's not, uh, I think, what really demands that sort of a pick. You generally do want a hyper carry. It could also be something where they're they're kind of trying to save their last pick for top lane and, and looking for something along those lines. Kogma, I think, would fit the bill. But yes. Kogma has not been popular whatsoever in the meta for quite some time. A lot of people feeling that it is a little bit underwhelming. And Optic going to try to show us different here. Kogma gets locked in. A bit of the makings of a Juggermaw here, you know, trying to speed up, trying to protect this guy. You have the Jarvan with the attack speed being given from the flag, the speed ups as well coming through from Zillion as well as the Revive, and you have Tom Kench there to keep him safe. They're going to have to really be on point, though, with how they're actually coordinating on these cooldowns, because if you devour Kogma as the Zillion uses the Revive and you waste those cooldowns, That's a good that point. can really throw a wrench in the gears. This this teamwork we have to see from Optic here. First Kogma of the split will be in the hands of Aero as he takes that into the bottom lane against Golden Guardians. Mm -hmm. Kindred locked in for contracts. He actually is that jungler that loves to be aggressive. He'll find those marks and we'll see how he 
chooses to do it once we get in the game. Aatrox for the top side, and we may just get a Jax locked in as Optic Gaming kind of roll around their last hover, and it's Camille okay. locked in here. Pretty interesting, yeah. Camille, Jarvan, a lot of engage there. Also does synergize quite well with the Zillion because you can actually lock them into those ultimates, and that almost guarantees that you're hitting the double bomb from the Zillion. A lot of follow-up damage there to come through. Kindred is going to be the first play for Contracts this split, so exciting to see him bringing that out. Is definitely a very, very aggressive style jungler, and is going to be Camille going to the jungle. They're sending J4 top uh, uh, for Dokla, so sense. it could be more of kind of a bruiser style. But swapping these back and forth, we're not actually sure exactly where they are going to go. Uh, Kindred certainly will be one who can deny a lot of the dive with that ultimate, but you still have to be careful about the timing of that ultimate. Things certainly can go bad if you're mistiming that at all, yeah. denying yourself from taking down one of your opponents. And also, you have to be very careful about the bombs coming right out of that because Zillion can set up bombs to expire right as the Kindred ultimate is expiring and bursts you down. We are seeing both teams now in that playoff race. Seven and nine Golden Guardians with a week of Optic and FlyQuest. Optic comes in at six and 10 with Golden Guardians and 100 Thieves. Both teams have a chance to win both of these games. And they are coming in doing their homework for this first one to make sure the week starts off right. You were saying the Camille could go jungle, went back up to Dokla, I believe. So that's going to be his first Camille. So we're getting a few firsts in here for Contracts, Kindred, Dokla's Camille. Everybody's trying to get a little bit maybe comfort and to say, hey, I want to actually try to carry more of this game instead of that Yorick, the Kennen sometimes, the Maokai, Vladimir. We've seen the Urgot up there for Dokla. Yeah, it'd be really interesting because Dokla, generally speaking, Optic isn't playing around that top side. That's true. And you know you need the Kog'Maw to do well to win this game. This composition is built around enabling the Kog'Maw, protecting that Kog'Maw. So if you're going to play to the bottom side of the map and Dokla is in carry versus carry top lane and is getting enemy jungle attention, that can go bad very quickly. So that's something they're going to have to be really, really careful about. You know, a Camille from behind is pretty worthless. So we'll see if Dokla can you know, maintain up in that top lane, or if Medios wants to make a move up there. Absolutely. And on the other side of the rift, heading into the final week, the pressure of playoffs is not lost on Golden Guardians Ole. If I don't make playoff, I, I'll i feel really bad. You know, it's like, I, I won last year's, and then if I don't make playoff, and then people are going to say, oh, Ole got carried last year, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, ha, huh, my life. But, yeah, at least I have to make playoff, and then... You know, who, who knows what's going to happen in playoff? You know, a guy who's gone through quite a bit of criticism in the season, but always looking for that positivity, knowing the team can make it happen. And they're sitting here in playoff position, mm -hmm. and he do they need to make that happen, as he's saying. Yeah, they definitely do. And, and, and while he, you know, he has had his ups and downs, I mm -hmm. do often feel that a lot of the criticism is somewhat unwarranted. You know, people talking about, you know, Ole getting carried or those sorts of things. He made it to Worlds on Immortals. He made it to Worlds on Team Liquid. Yeah. You know, he's off to a pretty good start here on Golden Guardian. So the guy has been successful with different partners in the bot lane, you know, on different teams. And excited to see if they can take down this game and lock playoffs, which would be a first for the Golden Guardians organization. They have only had failure in the LCS thus far, right? You know, back-to-back 10th -back place splits. They've already far exceeded that. They've actually... I believe tied the amount of wins they got all last year just in this split. Yep. So certainly off to a good start, but they would love to make playoffs. And the team they picked up in the offseason kind of were players that were hanging around. And you were like, wait a minute, they didn't have to do much work to get this awesome team on paper. It just took time for that team on paper to start working together. Mm -hmm. A lot of that, as we see here from the top lane, has come from Hauncer's strength. He has been one of the best top laners in the league throughout still, as Golden Guardians has been finding their footing in the league. Watching Medios as they're going scuttle for, for scuttle. Try to track here onto Kindred. One mark, so was able to get that bottom side scuttle crab. Yeah, and grabbing that early mark is always going to feel so good. It's essentially just a bit of a coin flip on if it's going to spawn on your side of the map uh, because they are vertical jungling, right? So they've essentially just traded sides of the map. Contracts does get the early bounty there, which is going to be feeling pretty good. Four is always the mark that you're going for because it is giving you all of that additional attack range. You are getting more power for every mark that you get, you know, just in attack speed adds on your Q and damage and so on, but really it is about hitting four. Only coming back, making sure there's no help from the lane. Nicely done, as definitely already has that pushed. Be able to keep Kog'Maw under his turret just a little bit. 17 to nine there, Def or Arrow has quite a bit of CS to catch up. So like you said, vertling, vertical jungling going on. Let's see how that affects warding as well. They see Ole coming back to lane just now. 
Yeah, and Arrow will be able to collect a lot of the CS under turret, so it's really just about how well he does in that regard. Uh, certainly, Kog'Ma is not going to have much lane priority. Varus is one of the stronger laning marksmen. I also think Braum has a lot more priority there as they're looking mid lane for Froggen. Fog to the left. Ooh, nicely done towards Contracts. They probably see that Raptors are being taken out there. So privy to his knowledge as well. And Medios would have been Contracts Mark, so things could have gotten pretty sticky there in a moment. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out what's going on for Optic. They have that early game lead. They usually get a good lead in CS. What would be the best way to use that with this team that kind of wants to go late? Do they just stall out and play differently now? I mean, I think if you can get advantages, you can try to play through those for some additional pressure. You know, if your lanes are pushing, then Medios has more flexibility with where right. he goes. He can look to attack the Kindred. He can look for either early dragons or even just getting vision out to try to protect that bottom lane. So anytime you have lane priority, even if you are trying to play for late, you can get small advantages, even if it is just protecting that late game carry. Very quick skirmishers here for Medios as he gets back out under the rift, says, I want to fight. I'm going to find some people to do it against. Kindred backing as well. We'll see what Contracts brings to the table. And it looks like everybody's getting their first back here. Crown will have Frog and TP back to lane. It stops them from doing that. They play some CS games here. I'm excited to see what happens for the first Drake. It is Ocean, so we may not draw too much attention just yet. Is Probably Contracts is going to find a few more of these marks before they really get down and dirty. That being said, if you can grab a really early Ocean, it's so good for your laning phase, right? So if you are worried at all about the poke coming through from your opponents or even just, you know, mana and, and kind of staying healthy in that regard, it's going to make a really, really big difference. Often laning advantages can be Ooh. completely eliminated by the other team just having that Ocean Dragon and Contract's going to be able to grab a second mark here early on. Both of them coming from this bottom side scuttle, which his team kind of has had priority on because they have that pushing bot lane. So he's going to be feeling really good about that. Back to the mid. Oh, Medios is actually alone. Crown is just left to get himself into base. Mm -hmm. CTB's back. He'll have a tier against the two Dark Seals to fill that minion dematerializer here. For Frog and bot lane not. Concussive Blows hits onto big. And a little bit of a lane advantage here for GGS. Optics safe farming under the turret for now with Tom Kenshin's Kog'Maw. Here's Contracts actually. Ward is on him, so they may start creeping over. Medios says we don't want too much. Didn't have priority through Froggen having that mid lane pushed up on Crown. They may try to get the exit fight though. Yeah, we'll see if they want to try to commit to this. Giving over that early ocean is pretty detrimental, but they don't have bot lane priority, so it should just be GGS grabbing this and they can oh. just hop over the wall and then Ole can just W to him. So really well done there. Playing through that bot lane priority, and despite the fact that Medios was aware that they could be doing this, did get that early ward, you know, they had the knowledge, they weren't in the position to actually take that fight, and that is largely because of their 2v2 deficit on the bottom side. Varus and Braum so much stronger in these early levels that Kog'Ma needs time to scale, so it is going to give them the early edge, and it makes the laning phase go from bad to worse when you can't really, you know, poke them out as much, and Varus is going to have even more mana to try to harass his opponents. Dokla as well, continuously getting pushed into lane. Hauntzer was given that respect until level six is hit. Now Hauntzer knows he can go pretty hard. This is where we see Medio still focused towards the bot side a little bit, making sure that bot lane is held and the jungle camps are also a resource he can grab. We'll see if Dokla gets any of that assistance soon. As we were speaking of his low jungle percentage just a little bit ago. Seven minutes on the clock, a little mismatch back here. Trying to stay in range of some CS as he goes, but Arrow knows he needs a bit of that damage to get on a turret and farm here with TP back. Yep, but it is the TP exactly, so it's worth pointing out, certainly it is you know, another reason that they are going to be down on lane priority in that 2v2, because it was TP versus the combat summoner on the other side. So certainly if you took that all in, you would be at a big disadvantage. They're going to try to now really hard shove this and make definitely lose farm on his way back to lane to try to even out some of that disadvantage. But you can see Olay is hanging around, and he's going to try to then delay this push and try to hold the wave as much as he can. You know, popping the shield holds that wave, so less oh. of it will be lost to the turret. <laughs> uh, it won't fully reset at least until they get that wave a bit more pushed up, and we may even see definitely able to actually you know, grab at least the range minions there that would have died. Not the cannon. Hate to see it. Dematerialized. Oh, it gets it though. Good mm -hmm. ward. Gives himself a little bit of vision so they can exit safely on them. Yeah, and it's a nice little play from Ole, right? You know, it, it's not massive, but it is a couple extra CS going the way of Deathly. It is that added experience, and it kind of have negated some of that early TP advantage that would have been there for the better base of, of Arrow, right? You know, you have... Woo! Oh! Womp womp. 
Contract says, thank you very much, as Meteos tries to go for top scuttle. Meteos was his mark, but he didn't want the full fight. Just playing a little bit of nuisance. Yeah, that's number three already. So three very fast yeah. marks there from contracts without even having to fight just off scuttles is going to be leaving you feeling really, really good and hungry for that fourth. Should well, he get the upgrade? Extra range just on the horizon for him. We'll have to see where the next one is. Pings are going towards the bot lane. They want coverage. Blue buff is up, and we see that arrow just on the right side from the members of GGS. So a little bit of an idea into the mind of where they are going next. As Deftly is able to stand tall alone in lane. They really don't have too much vision here on the side of Optic, which is preventing them from going hard on the solo marksman. Yeah, and they're, they're just Ooh, there's the last a, mark. a roam over to this. You can see that the mid laner is going to come. They're trying to really make sure he can get this early fourth mark. But the bot lane isn't fully shoved in, and Optic can respond to this, so Golden Guardians would have to be careful if they want to make this play. All four members need to come. Onto Froggen. Lambsor's fight is still up, and he can get the Glacial Tomb in. Big's going to be in great health down. I don't think he's going Big down is. just yet. He might get help from the team. Tries to deny a little bit of damage as he gets himself stuck into the blue, but he's... Oh, he does flash over the wall. I thought he was thinking contracts couldn't hit that shot, but man, they can click accurate. So safety there, but this is going to be that mark the contracts contracts wanted, and they're still going to try to do a little bit more inside the jungle. Yeah, they're just going to take away this full bottom side of the jungle. Medios really is going to be struggling with this because his lanes have no priority. He's losing more and more on this bottom side. Not only will Kindred get that fourth mark, but they also took away the blue buff. We'll see if they can't get punished at all for the greed, but it's, it's not going to be the case because there's two pink wards in there covering them up, making sure wow. that Optic can't actually really respond to that. So really nice advantages are coming through here. And Meteos is in a pretty tough position because when you have losing lanes, there's so many less places you can actually make plays on the map because you're always kind of at a disadvantage should it come down to a 2v2 or a 3v3. And you feel like you're forced to make plays. So if you feel like a reach, then it falls even farther behind and it does not become any easier. Yeah, it's a good point because you have in these situations often all lanes calling that they need help. All lanes are behind and Meteos may be getting picked off here himself. Oh, getting found in the jungle. They don't need the lanes right now. They're coloring outside the lines. Ten and a half minutes in, they take down Meteos for first blood. And that kill is going to go over to Contracts. Having yeah. a great game in the jungle. That is just brutal for Meteos. There's nowhere for him to go. All of his camps have been taken away by the opponent. They have no priority in mid lane. They have no priority in bot lane. Top lane is losing as well. And that's what the game can sometimes look like with three losing lanes in a mm -hmm. coordinated play. This is five stacks already for Kindred and first blood. He can go for another dragon here. And here this play is one more time. Meteos has been milling about, trying to set up a play for the Scuttle Crab, but Froggen is there, early ult, they flash forward, gets executed by the third hit from that E by a Kindred, and they're gonna take another Ocean. Oh, wow. And just give themselves even more sustain. Poke is gonna be little to nothing now, coming out from this Optic Squad. That's exactly what Arrow wants to do. He's gonna get Living Artillery out soon enough, deplete that Mana Bar a bit, and when he does want to get his Arcane Barrage up with W, it's just Ole throwing up his shield, so not much going to happen there. Yeah, I mean, definitely is going to have essentially infinite mana. It's like you have a free tier, basically, at that point, <laughs> to be able to just constantly poke away at your opponents. And Meteos up to this top side, trying to clear vision, trying to see where he can plug some of the holes that are kind of coming into this Optic squad, but it really feels like it's a sinking ship, and everywhere Meteos goes to try to cover, another hole is spreading up somewhere, and you only have so many hands before it does go down. They are playing for a scaling composition here with the Kog'Maw, certainly, but the scaling is very strong on the other side from Golden Guardians as well when you consider the team fighting because you have these double marksmen that are both going to be very strong. Lissandra certainly is going to give you a lot of ability to put pressure onto this Kog'Maw. Yep. Braum is going to be there with the shield blocking a lot of the Kog'Maw damage, so it's not a cut-and-dry free team fight win from Optic by any means if they get to that late-game stage. Gonna find a big mistake around Golden Guardians. Maybe that Baron objective, if it's even something they set up for Optic to see. Right now, they can continue to play the side lanes. Still about a minute and a half away from that 14 minute plate fall off. Not too many have been taken, but we're sure to see that lane swap. Definitely Ole going somewhere else once they're able to break this bottom turret. Contracts hovering around the Rift Herald as they're kind of waiting for eyes on Meteos. They've had good uh, a mark on them all game long. The moment they do figure out where he is, they're going to go ahead and take this. And there's just no way for them to contest, even if they walk over 3v3. You can see Dokla is stuck under his turret with minions there. A crown had been pushed in, so GGS had done all their due diligence before actually going over to this. All the lanes are shoved. They have vision in the area. There's no chance for Meteos to really try to contest. Contracts 
just getting that team further and further ahead. And I want to see him drop the Rift Herald in the next couple seconds here because you want to cash out on the turret plates from the Rift Herald. Big time. And at 14 minutes, those are going to fall off. So he needs to be quick about it. Maybe run straight down to bot side and drop it or even just drop it mid for some turret damage and a couple plates because that becomes worth much less in only 30 seconds. And we'll see if he actually does make the play. It may scream down towards bot side once again. He has the option to go both ways. Just I think he's takes gonna wait red. Too long. And as you can see on the top of your screen, Golden Guardian's feeling good about the results of this match, securing a 2019 sp uh, spring playoff position with a victory here over Optic. The race is on. These two definitely need to start, or I should say Optic, needs to start finding some ground in this game if they want to have a chance. Yeah, they really do. It's, it's going to be a, a bit of a tough spot for them, but as long as they can you know, maintain their position and not fall further behind, Scale you know, the they are exactly, you know, you're just getting that Kog'Maw to a couple items, you're going to have the revive, you're going to have all this protection built up, so they really are going to be very dependent on how Arrow can perform in these later stages, but he's pretty significantly behind with three mm -hmm. turret plates being taken by Deathly. You know, Deathly's also up 30 plus CS. They're dropping the Rift mid now to try to pressure. You know, I don't, can get there. I don't see it happening, but they do have the Kogma. Meteos could be tanky enough in a bit that they two-man this on a real big sneak. But you got six minutes before Baron even comes up, and they have to put the gates up right now and stop this damage. At least keeping mid is great for Crown. He can still keep himself farming up and not push back that second tier. Yeah, and Golden Guardians, they do get that chunk down on mid, but I, I still think you drop that a minute earlier, you're getting an additional 320 gold. You get guaranteed yeah. two plates from that, so uh, is a bit of a mistake. Not going to be you know, the end of the world by any means, but you have to think about that in terms of that's a kill, right? 300 gold is essentially a kill there, so two plates is equivalent to that. And they did miss out on that, but either way, they will be able to return to this mid lane. And if Crown is ever pushed back to base, that mid lane turret will fall. And it'll give Golden Guardians even more access into the Optic jungle where they've been you know, running amok so far. Yeah. Props to Optic on that kind of see through of Golden Guardian strategy with definitely an Ole back. Bottom lane comes up and they protect mid. Now, top lane gets a bit of love. It's just that hover. We'll see a counter here if Dokla is to be attacked. He did just get marked up by Contracts. So we'll see if it's the long game on that. And Contracts goes from bottom to top here in a few minutes. Blue delivery over at Crown. That would be good so he can keep dancing around the mid lane. And they have eyes again on Meteos. So more control over the map. And you can see this bottom lane comparison here. Significantly ahead, almost 1,000. Now over 1,000 gold ahead for Deathly. They are pressuring this Kog'Ma so hard. And when you think of the Kog'Ma as the win condition, for Optic, that becomes very, very concerning because even with all the support, if you're too far behind as far as the atomization, if your Rage Blade is coming through too late, you're seeding too much yep. ground, and that is really what it feels like is happening as it's not just him that's losing ground, Ooh. Medios is losing ground as well because he doesn't have a bot lane to support him every time the bot side is getting invaded. And the timing is perfect as well. Coming up in 16 minutes, Infernal Drake spawns. They suffocate Optic out of the bottom side of the jungle with vision and with power. And it's going to be another uncontested Drake here for Golden Guardians. Infernal going to be a big one again, you know, to contest that late game. Uh, Mountain Dragon going to be the next, giving them perhaps more opportunity to try to actually attack something like the Baron or for their sieging potential. Midos is up here on the top side of the map, and Hunter is playing it pretty safe, knowing that his jungler is not around. But he does have ultimate, so I still think it's a very difficult dive uh, for Optic to look for, even if they want to try. These little things that could be the Hail Mary for Optic, the Mountain Drake with the Kogma, the Blade of the Rune King, and if they get to the objective secretly later, like, all of these little things they need to put into place because everything else is falling apart right now. Yeah. 17 minutes here, Contracts heads up top, and it looks like they're going to start putting some finishing touches on the laning phase to get this fight phase underway. Yeah, I mean, both of these, these ADs are going to be itemizing very similarly, right? They're both going to be going Blade of the Rune King into mm -hmm. a Rage Blade. The Rage Blade is just going to come so much faster from Deathly, and that is going to make it really tough for them to compete because I think we're going to see Optic trying to fight around that 2-3 item power spike, but definitely very likely is going to be completing that so much faster. And both in Guardians now setting up for a potential invade. There are five members of Optic around, so if they were to go for this, perhaps Optic can pull the trigger and actually turn something around on them. Contracts being able to toy with two or three members of Optic at the same time. You can see Optic tempered in trying to engage on that. They know they're behind and they know any fight that gets really scrappy is not going to be in their favor. Already frog in the mid lane here on the crown, down to half HP. Abyssal Voyage comes in. 
might be enough to protect the turret down to under 100. The burn is in, or the heal is on as he chugs the potion. Keeps himself alive. Yeah, but he doesn't have TP, and that's a lot of their wave clear down. So we can see Golden Guardians are bringing up Haunter. They want to try to knock down this turret, but Arrow moving over as well, trying to cover this. Optics certainly want to keep this mid lane turret alive. The TP was forced on yep. that Rift Herald, though, and now he's sent back to base, so we'll see if they can keep it safe. Haven't even really used the fight prowess of this team yet. The Kindred Ultimate with the Frog and Ultimate of Lissandra. They have so much crowd control that Optic hasn't even stepped forward to find it. They will stay far enough back here. Maybe second tier turrets are the ones they want to defend. A little easier for them to move through their own jungle. But that's becoming hard at this point, as GGS is securely moving their ward line up every attack. Yeah, they really are. And they're kind of just getting run around, right? You you attack Crown, he goes back to base. So Kogma has to move mid lane to try to cover that. Now there's no one to actually cover that top lane outer turret. So the bot lane just goes back up there. They take that. And Golden Guardians is just trying to spread Optic Bin. They know that these guys don't have enough resources to kind of always match 1v1 and match on even numbers. So anytime you have to send an extra person to one side of the map, that opens an opportunity for Golden Guardians to get something done elsewhere. Seeing if they will try to attack Hanser, but nobody even wants to solo fight in each lane. Rightly so for Optic. They're playing it smart. They're not getting baited into any of these weird fights. Contracts still just living in the mind of Medios all game long. It's been so difficult. Yeah. They came to play and they had his number to start. And Contracts has, has done a great job with this pressure, but we've we've all played those jungle games where you have the losing lanes and the other team is doing these coordinated invades. It, yeah. it just feels so helpless at times, right? You know, no matter where you go is gonna feel like the wrong decision for Medios because everyone needs help and you're weaker everywhere on the map. So they really are at this point just depending on that late game scaling, depending on Kogma to get something massive done in one team fight and to turn the game on its head off of that. But as you can see, the items are starting to come through here. The completions are coming in. Rage Blade already done now for this Varus on that two item power spike. Kogma still very far off of that. So Golden Guardians now can take it one step further. They can even just look to force fights yeah. knowing how much stronger their marksman is. Interesting seeing Golden Guardians compositions recently. It was kind of like Golden Guardians go for late game. A lot of these teams were mm -hmm. just scaling up, scaling up here. They are keeping the tempo up and setting a frantic pace here for Optic to have to match. No more wards just around the Drake. A Mountain Drake will be a third elemental of the game. So Oceans, Infernals, and Mountains here. And all for GGS. Yep, and I, and I think it's a good call out talking about the, the different style that they're playing today because, you know, as, as we said, you win this game, you're in playoffs, and you want to be able to show that you can play these multiple different styles that makes you much more of a threat going into a best of series where people have to prepare their pick ban to match what you are showing. And every style that you can show confidence with is another that your opponent's coach has to give you consideration to and pick them. Absolutely. I mean, we know contracts for Graves, for Kha'Zix, for going hard on his jungle champions. Mm -hmm. And why not? We've seen him on Kindred before. Just not this split. Break it out now. Bring that fight dynamic to the team. And they haven't even had to use Lamps for Spike yet. They have been yeah. able to find these small skirmishes that has really pulled Optic apart. Now, Mountain Drake, once again, there isn't even a member of Optic within range. Yep, it's four dragons going the way here of Golden Guardians. and. You have to feel like the game is just more and more in their hands. Yep. I think with this sort of a lead this early on, it becomes much less about how does Optic play, and it's more about Golden, how does Golden Guardians play, because I really do feel like with this sort of an advantage, with four dragons to none, with a significant gold lead, a stronger comp in this part of the game, you have to depend on mistakes from Golden Guardians. Playing good on the side of Optic is not enough anymore. Yeah. It's definitely a game for Golden Guardians to look at here moving into playoffs. You have members across the board that have been in that best of five situation. And we'll see what happens once they get back into it. We know a lot of them have been on the big stage doing it. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be too hard as they match up now with a little bit better competition off paper than just looking good on paper. This team is looking great heading into playoffs. One of the things you can look at, though, for the side of Optic is you win one team fight, you collect those three bounties. 1550 gold is a lot, especially if those Ash kills in. are going the way of Kogma. You can start to think, hey, maybe there's a way back in, but now it's Golden Guardians trying to pick up the pace. They are on to Baron. Gonna have to pull off it as it was spotted by Optic, but that is something that they can threaten. You have a Blade of the Rune King on your Kindred here this early on, and that on top of 
the Blood Razor is going to allow him to really knock down that objective very fast. As long as someone is tanking for him, he can two mana at this point with an Infernal, with Double Ocean, and the Mountain. Ooh, their objective takes are nasty. A little bit of damage there. Getting it in. I mean, Kog'Maw's now on two items. Two items are completed for the Zillion as well. This may be their opportunity to look for something, but Meteos oh is getting pushed word. out. He doesn't have the chance to get any armor. The BF Sword into the stopwatch already as he's trying to keep himself alive with the GA later, but it's not working right now, and he just can't get any tankiness in. He's Like we said, he's going to be forced to help the team and make that first nuke impact damage count. And they just started up now. This is double Blade of the Rune King Marksman hitting this bear, and it's going down so already fast. Meteos is back in base. Without the stopwatch, without the flash, they're just going to commit to it. Arrows off on the right, Living Artillery. No, nothing from him. Contract smites it down, and Optic has watched each and every objective fall to the wayside and yeah. go to Golden Guardians this game. And I feel like watching that early Baron go down, Optic has basically just watched their game end. It feels like they've gifted everything to Golden yep. Guardians. They were never in position to contest at any point. They lost all three lanes, and now you're sitting, well, they have Baron too. What, what are you supposed to do? There's very little opportunity now for Optic to actually come back, barring some sort of Miracle Engage or Miracle team fight. But it's hard to see that working when all of the summoners are up for Golden Guardians. They have all of the tools available, and everything is, is kind of not there on the side of Optic. It makes a huge difference in the clip of vision that you have. You see the three sweepers on the side of Golden Guardians that they have been denying that red side vision for Optic in, who only have their two sweepers. So they can't push out the vision, nor can they set up enough to get back in. The fact that Golden Guardians is that much ahead and they're just clearing vision means they have that much more power. Yeah, but I think I think Optic is going to have to choose their moment and just try to force a fight. Because at this point, if you just continue to sit back, you will lose your jungle, you will lose more yeah. objectives, the gold lead will balloon even further, and then there's no hope whatsoever of actually winning the game. You know, with Kog'Maw and Varus both on two items, yes, there are some additional pieces for the Varus, but this may be your best opportunity when you're all at two items before your opponents get those additional ones coming through. And the gold lead really just starts showing itself that much more. You know I just realized? It's a one kill game. Yep. They have danced around each other. Somehow Golden Guardians has just found their way, inching up the lanes. Optic giving it up, not contesting, giving it up, trying to find the perfect fight, and they realize they continue to wait too long in each instance. Yeah, I mean, Golden Guardians don't need to force a fight. You know, why would you force a fight if, if Optic is just willing to give you everything, right? If they're going to seed the True. jungle, if they're going to seed every dragon, you don't need to take oh. that fight. Just take the objectives. And that's exactly what they are doing here, knocking down the bot lane outer, Going to be walking around trying to clean up even more of this turret gold, and it feels like Optic are making the call to just try to just weather the storm, just keep on Dirt. giving up and, and hope that you eventually Whoop. get that fight. Good hit. Contract's taking a bit of damage there. Big gray health already goes down. Optic trying to piece together the perfect situation here with the Quicksilver Sash on big so Arrow can continue to build the damage right away. Stacking up the Rage Blade, however, takes time in the fight. Something they don't have right now. These fights are happening and ending just as fast. Yeah, they're ending extremely fast, as you say. I mean, there's four huge damage threats on the side of Golden Guardians, so people are going to go down in a hurry. And now you have Froggen up on the top side, pushing in Baron minions in all three waves at this point of the game. Uh, you're certainly going to see Golden Guardians looking for these outer turrets. You can see Froggen going to be having access to that turret, and you won't be able to have Optic matching them on all sides. So top lane outer is going to be sacrificed. We'll see if Optic decides to try to pull the trigger and engage elsewhere on the map and try to get that odd man fight. The denial of every resource. They <laughs> have nothing. Optic's trying to live just outside their base. They're going for the engage, Riv. Head in. Nice job by Big. They're looking for Deftly right away. He gets the Zanyas down. Medios and Dokla are both right on top of him. Deftly could get himself the safety, but he goes down right there. Big safe with Grey Health. Contract's coming in now. Hauntzer looks to clear a little bit of ground with his Qs. And Big's going to be the next one to go down as he lets the team go to the other side. Dokla gets himself safe to the right. Infernal Drake's there. Going to be to help on this one. Crown's coming into the left. He doesn't have much mana, but he can provide. No, no, not the ultimate. Just bombs. Contracts with the Lambs respite down. Big just on the outside does go down to the hands of Frog. And as we're back up to the top side of the fight, Dokla's alive. Medios about to go down and gets out of the Infernal Chains. Crown still back and forth. Hauntzer knows he doesn't have enough to deal the damage. So he's going for this 2v1 right now. Dokla runs for the hills. He's going to get Ole in a second here. Hauntzer's left side. Froggen's also in the fight. Does he glacial path forward? No turret there. Looks yeah, like he's already again. used it to get in range. Ring of Frost to lock him down. One more glacial shard. And they get another one. One and a one for three across the map. Yeah, Golden Guardians knocking down multiple members there. They do lose both.
both their marksmen, but it doesn't matter. They win the extended fight when Kogma went down. Not much hope of Optic winning the rest of that. So the bottom lane inhibitor will get cracked. One outer remaining in mid lane. That may get knocked down too. Optic do pull the trigger. They at least, to their credit, try to make a fight before they just give up their inhibitors as well. And it was a good attempt as both the solo laners were not there. So this is starting out as a 5v3. They're able to get right on top of Deathly. Definitely not able to get much done. Does go down very quickly. But Contracts is still that secondary marksman putting out so much DPS on this Kindred with all of these stacks, all the additional range. Big is going to get chased down and taken down as well. And then, a little bit unlucky there from Dokla as the kind of awakening of the dragon actually knocks him out of his hook shot. But as Arrow comes over here, Arrow gets absolutely burst down. The Kindred Lambs are spike keeping contracts alive for a little bit longer. And these guys are so low on health that they have to retreat from Hauntzer and end up losing another man in the eventual fight. What a crazy back and forth Golden Guardians obviously coming out on top, but Optic able to get a few there. And, and that's double Infernal now. Mm -hmm. you know, during that replay, the second, second Infernal did go down. Optic looking to force Whoa, here. Dokla in on the two. He's going hard with the ultimatum on the Deathly, and he absolutely deletes him. This could be the fight. Optic comes back, but Golden Guardians have their eye on priority targets. Crown's now about to go down. He gets the Chrono Shift back onto himself. Meteo's taking damage from Contracts on the left side. He got a resurrection onto Dokla. He'll be back into the fight, but Contracts says, you are in here with me, as they also lose Dokla on the bottom side of the fight. And like I said, the scatter favors the Guardians. Yeah, and they have supers on the Nexus turrets here, Riv. They're just gonna march straight down mid lane. It looks like they're trying to just run past oh. the turret. They're looking for the end. Golden Guardians Smile. looking to close out here and potentially punch their playoff ticket. Loved it right after the fight. Frog and hands off the keyboard. Double fist bump to Contracts and Deathly. The two that sit beside him as they lock in that playoff spot. Soon enough with two Nexus turrets to go down. The next one will fall. 30 minutes in. Golden Guardians looking good coming into week nine. They're looking for the 2-0 and they've locked themselves a playoff spot. Congratulations to the Golden Guardians. First time in the organization's history. They will make the playoffs, and they do it in dominating fashion. Gotta feel good, Ole says. The pressure is still there. He knows what this feels like, and he knows he is a player on a team, and all of them deserve to be in that playoff position, and now they are. Certainly the case. You know, so many redemption stories for these teams. Players who felt like they had been cast aside by their former teams, being able to prove just how good they are, looking incredible today and going into playoffs in very strong form. Optic, another team fighting for that final playoff spot. They did not look close today against the Golden Guardians. No. Run over all three lanes. Very hard for Meteos to really get anything done when all of your lanes are pushed in. Kindred takes over the game. I mean, that was a 10-11 stack. Kindred game for contracts. He was ridiculously fed. And it's a family win today. It is a family win, as you can see Hunter on stage there with the team. <laughs> Future Everybody, Golden Guardians player. Everybody very, very happy. You saw the camaraderie, too, between Aww. the players, the hugs, Frog. Right, that's just adorable. As he walks through, giving a, a hug to Rick Fox. A lot of emotions here, playoff weekend for these teams that are still vying for that spot, and Golden Guardians feels so great. Like you said, first time for the organization, and what was such turbulent times in their previous splits. It, this team, what's going to happen? When yeah. are they ever going to show up? And they're shining now. I mean, they got a, a tremendous amount of criticism for back-to-back 10th -back place finishes last yeah. year. A lot of pressure on, on the members of this organization to turn it around. You know, they brought in a new GM. Uh, they changed up their coaching staff. They brought in a whole bunch of new players. They're certainly making the steps yeah. they need to make. And it has paid off for them. They have made playoffs. And now it just remains to be seen how far they can go. So like we said, that change of play, uh, play style looks good heading into playoffs. Contracts on uh, aggression again. He's always played more aggressive, but really in the face of Medios. When he has that objective of having to get the marks for Kindred, it seems like having that in mind, but also helping mm -hmm. the team really pushed him to another level and can't wait to see more of that. For more on that victory that earned Golden Guardians their first playoff appearance ever, Avli is standing by for an interview with the winners. Thanks, Riv. Frog and Deathly, guys, congratulations on the win and making playoffs for the first time for Golden Guardians. Deathly, this is your first playoffs ever, but before we turn the cameras on, I'm excited for you, but you said you were upset with that game. Yeah, I felt like I, the entire game was really slow. There, there wasn't many kills, and in the team fights, they just like were super horny for me and just one-shot me. So like, I didn't really get to play the game in that aspect, but outside of that, I felt like we played really well as a team. 
I know you told me you look up to double lift and I, I'm definitely seeing the uh, the relations, but Froggen for you, this is your first playoff since coming to NA all those years ago. So are I mean, you excited? Feels pretty good to be back. Feels pretty good to be back. And this is again, the highest place that you have ever placed within NA. So what, with this team, what's this moment like for you, qualifying with Golden Guardians, and especially after such a rough start? Um, I think it feels pretty good, but there's something about like starting 0-4 and then still making it into playoffs for the team someone. So I don't know, maybe we'll see something. Hopefully in playoffs, you guys are just going to have that stellar run then. But I mean, speaking to that, you guys did have the rough start. At what point in the split did you guys realize, like, no, this is our split, we're making it? It actually felt like this week of practice was when everything clicked with the team. It felt like everyone was on the same page and we weren't playing just for ourselves. And it really showed in our week of practice that like we can be a good team. Now, you guys took one of the last spots. There's one spot left, four teams competing for it. Who do you think is going to join you? Um, I think it's really hard to say right now since the rest of the team seems really even and it's more about who like has a good day. Um, I really have no idea who's going to make it right now. Any predictions from you? Uh, I'm, I don't even know which teams. We, we got CLG, we got Clutch, we have Optic as well as Fox. Ooh, I'd say Fox. Fox? All right, well, Fox, their game is coming up next. Guys, again, congratulations and thank you for taking the time to talk to us. We're going to see how that game goes, but first we're going to see from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Avali. Golden Guardians locking their spot for playoffs. Punch that ticket, Crumbs. The playoff ticket punch. Boom. Uh, ah, oh, oh. All right, now that looked like a playoff team, though. Yes. Uh, what, yeah. what happened to, to Golden Guardians in these, in these last few weeks that they've absolutely turned it on and made themselves a very clear playoff team? I think they're going full steam ahead with the contracts train. He had a great game playing Kindred, and this is such a different style. Instead of playing Jarvan or Sidrani, you're now playing the Kindred. I mean, so damn aggressive that everyone else has to just go help him out, and it it speeds up what Golden Guardians was doing every other game. Yeah, I mean, compare this to the Poppy game when he was kind of forced onto that, like, I'm here for the team. Like, <laughs> totally different player. And he got a little lucky with some of the Scuttle Crab RNG, yep. but with that, he absolutely took over the game. And they looked cleaner than they've looked, I think, all year long. All right, well, so then let's just talk about prospects towards playoffs. Because that's what everyone cares about at this point. It was already mentioned, this is the first trip to the postseason for the organization. Uh, far superior performance to their previous two splits. For Deathly, it'll be his first time out. For Frog and Haunts or Ole, it's a return to somewhere they've been before. Even Contracts has been in that postseason before. How do we expect this version of Golden Guardians to pair up against some of the other playoff teams? So, not to say that they're going to have a great matchup to anyone in, in particular, but I think that even against Team Liquid, they are actually going to be able to put up a really good performance. You remember that game where Contracts invaded Exmithia and was able to have a really strong early lead? Mm -hmm. If he does that on Kindred and continues to play that style, we've seen guys like TL really struggle to come back in a game based off of that aggression. Well, to get to TL in the semifinals, they're going to have to go through someone in the quarters. So, Mark, let's look at those quarterfinal matchups. Who do you think that they're paired well against? I think, you know, there's some whole team concerns that you might have against what is likely TSM as the favorite team that will probably not get the buy and end up in the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. But against almost even them, they have a very strong top side of the map. I would say Hanser, regardless of what other teams end up in the quarterfinals, he's probably the best top laner in quarterfinals. You factor in contracts looking revitalized, hopefully with a more aggressive champion pool. Froggen's a stud in the mid lane. You might have a very strong top half of the map that can hopefully carry them throughout the playoffs. Yeah, it's all a matter of mitigating whatever, you know, if the bottom lane is the weakest lane, Pick champions that mitigate that. Take heal clans, take the Tom Cans, take the Alistar, just play it really slow down there, let the rest of the map do the work, and this team looks a lot stronger. All right, so it's all about the top side of the map for Golden Guardians in the postseason. Let's talk about Froggen as well, as he's a crucial part of that trio. This is a guy who hasn't been in the postseason for quite some time, but is one of the most experienced players on the entire stage. His not just his team alone. Yeah, I mean, the change in play style that happens with contract needs to be, you know, kind of symbiotic with the mid laner. He's not on Karthus here farming his junglers, <laughs> Krugs, and uh, Raptors, and Wolves, and stuff. He's taking Lissandra and following him on invades. And I think seeing a more proactive Froggen is great. Every time Froggen is out of his lane, I think this team looks so much better. And it's about maintaining that through playoffs because this is, is I think, the best we've seen Golden Guardians look. 
And of course, it's also important to note that Optic is not eliminated yet from playoff contention. However, their destiny is not in their own hands. They are relying on a few other teams to either lose out this weekend. We'll keep you updated with that, of course, alongside the Foldy Sheet. If not already, though, make sure you're logged in to watch.lalesports.com, where you can get an upgraded viewing experience alongside all the YouTube and Twitch interactions that you know and love. Coming